Hey everyone, Sam here, and today we're going to be starting a new mini-series on building an image cropper. This is something I've been building in a side project of mine over the past few weeks, and it's turning out to be a really cool component. It uses React, Use Gesture, and Framer Motion, and I've just been really impressed with how these libraries handle gestures and animations. Uh, you end up with an experience that really feels like it belongs in a native app. So I think you're going to like this. And without further ado, let's go ahead and start off part one and get right into some code. So I've got a brand new React app here. It happens to be a Next project, but that doesn't matter for uh, the purpose of what we're building. And uh, the first thing we want to do is come in here and just render out our new image cropper component. And we can see that Next is showing us that this is not defined. And so uh, I'm just going to come down here and create a little function component right in the body of this page to get us started. So for styling, I'm using Tailwind here. And the only thing uh, that we have so far are these little aspect ratio classes. These actually come from a Tailwind plugin, but this is going to kind of be the viewport for our image cropper. And then right here inside, uh, we'll go ahead and paste this image tag, and that takes the source prop in and renders out the image just like that. Now we can see uh, to start that the image is being contained in this blue container here. But because we do want to crop this and be able to move it around, uh, it should really fill up this space. So for now, we can go ahead and remove this object contain uh, CSS class and go ahead and make with auto. And that should stretch out the image to basically take up the full height, but then take up its natural width. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. Uh, we're gonna use React Use Gesture to wire up some gesture handlers to our image because the browser doesn't provide anything out of the box like an on drag or an on pinch the way it does an on click on a button. So that's why we're using this library. And uh, it's pretty awesome little library here, pretty easy to use. So the way we use this is to call use gesture, just like that, right in our component. And we'll see that VS Code went ahead and imported it from React use gesture. So that's great. And now within use gesture, uh, we basically get all these really cool hooks that we get to use. But the one we want to start with is on drag. So first, we're going to wire up a drag handler for this image, basically, so that the user can click and drag on it to move it around. And that's exactly what this on drag hook is going to let us do. So if we just went ahead and console.log dragging here and come over and try to drag on our app, well, we're not going to see anything. And that's because we have to bind this gesture to a particular element in our render function. Now, there's a few ways to do this, but uh, the way we're going to do it is using the options here and passing in a DOM target. And so all we need now is basically a ref to our image because that's what we want to pass in. So let's define an image ref using use ref. And then we'll just slap that on our image right here. And so now once we save that uh, with any luck, we should be able to come over to our app and check that out. We can just uh, drag on our image and we see this console going nuts over here. But uh, that's as easy as this library makes it to basically wire up these gestures that are not part of the browser makes it almost feel like it is part of the browser because it's, it's almost as easy. And so now, of course, what we want to do is actually move this image as the user drags. So uh, there's a few ways to do this, but the easiest way to start and just to understand how all of these libraries work together is to just use uh, some CSS and some React state. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's start uh, with a style prop right down here on our image. And our strategy is just going to be to set our left property and our top property here. So if I were to say left is 100, you'll see that the image moves over. Left is 200, it moves over some more. That's just uh, vanilla CSS working for us. But because it's in an expression here, we can bind this to state. So now we can come up here and say, let crop set crop equals use state. And uh, this is just react state. And let's start this with an X value and a Y value, just like that. And down here on our style, we'll bind this to crop.x and crop.y. And so now we should be able to come up here and do the same thing, set this to 100, set this to 200, 
and so on, we can see the image is moving. But instead of setting it like that, what we're going to do is set it right here in the callback of our on drag handler. So on drag gets a bunch of cool stuff uh, from React use gesture, but the one we're interested in right now is this little property called offset. So if we were to go ahead and log offset, let's come over here and drag this around a little bit. We're going to see that this is an array with these two values. And the first one is the X position and the second one is the Y. So if I drag this really far and we look down here, we'll see that these numbers get bigger. So this is basically telling us how many pixels we've dragged in the X and Y directions. So we can destructure this array into the change in X and the change in Y. And then we can just call set crop and we'll make X the change in X and Y the change in Y. And now when we drag our image, look at that. It's following our cursor exactly. And, uh, you know, that's just really cool how fast and easy this is. And again, if we were to look at this here in the inspector and see, we're just going to see that React is setting the left and top properties, and then it's being re-rendered. Now, sometimes you'll notice if you have this elements pane open and you start using this, you're going to see some kind of frames being dropped here. That's just because the inspector is, is doing all this work. But when we're over here on just the console, uh, this is happening uh, very smoothly. And we're still using React State, which these animation libraries are designed to improve upon even further, as we'll see later in this series. But uh, just as a very basic intro, this is pretty impressive. You know, if we were to drop uh, a log right here in the body of our component, you know, this is going to run every time React re-renders this component, which is going to happen every time we set state on this callback. And so now if we were to look at this console right here, you know, just in one little drag, React just re-rendered the whole application 25 times. So, of course, this is a small app, and so it's going to handle it fine. In larger apps, you could imagine this causing problems, but I still think it's pretty impressive that React can handle all these re-renders, and it feels really good when you're using this uh, just kind of out of the box like this. So that's the basics of dragging. Let's go ahead and drop just a little div down here and say here is our crop X crop.x and our crop y. And again, uh, we can see it starts out at 0, 0 in the top left corner. And then as the user kind of drags it around, our x moves and so does our y. OK, so now that we have the basic drag gesture being handled, let's move on to a pinch to zoom, which is basically the second gesture that we want to handle with our image cropper. OK, so let's come right back up to our use gesture hook that we're using right here. And right next to on drag, we'll go ahead and drop in this on pinch handler. So let's start by just logging that we're pinching here and just see if this works. Clear the console, come to our image and zoom in. So I'm using uh, my two fingers here on a trackpad. And as we saw, we do get our pinching message logged to the console, but we're also seeing uh, the native browser behavior, which is zooming in and out on the overall web page. We can see that from the rest of the text here. So there's a few things that we need to do to help React use gesture disambiguate between pinching on the image and trying uh, to zoom in and out on the whole browser. So the first thing is to come here to our use gesture options, and we want event options here to be passive false. This is something right out of the guides and it just is recommended when using pinch uh, again to help disambiguate between the browser behavior here. And the second thing we want to make sure to do is come down to our image and on the style we want to set touch action here to none. Now that actually should be enough to get this working if you were to pull this up on an actual device. But if we come back over here in Chrome's kind of emulator and, you know, even if we refresh this and come up here, we can see our drag working. Uh, but if we pinch, we're going to see that happening again. That's because the emulator is not working exactly the same way as mobile Safari does. So what I did here is just popped open my little app wrapper component here and drop this meta tag, which is just going to prevent the site from scaling. 
And that's just gonna let me use Chrome's dev tools here to keep developing this app without having to use a simulator or using a real device. And so now if we were to start this out and refresh, we should get our dragging behavior. And if I pinch, uh, we're gonna see that pinching message to the console, both when I'm going inside and out. So now we've got this handler wired up. Let's go ahead and add a new property to our crop object here. It's gonna be scale. And we're going to start off as one. And then down here in our style, we'll add a transform, which is going to be scale of crop.scale. And so again, now if we were to change this value right here to two, let's say we should see it affect the image and we do. So all we got to do is come down to this event. We'll grab offset again, which in this case, uh, in the case of the pinch gesture, gives us the total distance that's pinched here. And we can just say that we want to set our crop right here. So uh, what we're gonna do is use the function version of set crop, since the pinch should only affect the scale, but not the X and the Y. So we'll use the old crop and we'll return a new object with the old crop, but overriding the scale property to this new value. And then same right here, we want this handler to use the old value of crop, return a new object with that old value, but updating the X and the Y. So now with any luck, we should still be able to drag our image. And if we pinch, oh, we can see it's working. It's very sensitive. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is the total distance traveled. We can just divide this by some factor. For now, let's just put 50. And this is gonna make it really small, so we can go ahead and add one for the original scale here. And that way, this is just gonna say, give us 100% plus uh, the difference here, but kind of scaled down by a factor of 50. So let's come back, try this out. If we drag this, it still works. And if we pinch, uh, it works as well. So let's go ahead and add the scale down here just to our little debug info. Crop scale and crop dot scale. So there we can see it's 0.29. And uh, yeah, this is working great. So I'm just again pinching on my trackpad here. Uh, but since we're emulating mobile, this is emulating a, a touch pinch uh, gesture on the device. And uh, if you open this in your phone, uh, it feels really nice. We'll do that at the end of this series. so I can show you exactly what it looks and feels like. But uh, to get us started, this is uh, pretty awesome. And again, basically React use gesture here, giving us these two little gesture callbacks so that we get set up just as if on pinch and on drag were something that either React or the browser gave to us out of the box. So that's it for this first video here. Hopefully you have a basic understanding of how React use gesture works. We got a lot more math to do to get these croppings right. And then we've got frame or motion to add on to get some animations uh, on our image as the user interacts with it. So these are all gonna be really cool things coming up in future videos, so stay tuned for those. But until then, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.